pictures of the dressing room right now. Let's get straight to our commentary team. We're going to take you through this first match. It's Chris Patterson and John Beatty. Thank you, lads. Well, the front row, there it is. A Lavotti, Bigi and Ferrari, strong Italian front row. Traditionally, that is an Italian strength. The beef in the Italian pack, though, supplied by the six foot six Marco Fusa and Kiwi Dean Bud. Parise is rested, so Minto Mbanda and Canadian board 33 year old Barbieri. They are the back row. Edward Gore is captain at scrum half. Tomasa Allen is at standoff. Campagnaro from the Exeter Chiefs. In the midfield, the threat beside Zebres, Boni, and Sato. Of Glasgow Warriors, Esposito and Padovani can pose a threat in the back three. Well, Scotland in his first game in charge, Gregor Townsend's made nine changes since that 29-0 win. There's the front row, WP now back. He would surely have made the Lions. He's with Dell and Ford. Uh, in the second row, it's a partnership straddling the M8. Second row with uh, Glasgow Swinson and Tullis from Edinburgh. And the first time in two years, no grace in the second row. Strong looking back row, as the boys were saying. The abrasion of Strauss and Hardy with Barclays. Cool, there's a late change. Ryan Wilson is in the team. That could be a change we've not been told of. Um, Ali Price and Finn Russell are the halfbacks. And we know this midfield, Dunbar and Matt Scott both know the way forward in the centres. They will be a handful. And the back three, plenty of pace, plenty of size. Uh, Duncan Taylor is at fullback, Hoyland and Visser. The wingers will bring you up to date if that is a change in the team. And uh, the referee is uh, going to be Paul Williams, who is very hot in Singapore, uh, enclosed stadium. It's a roof, there's a temperature, 28 degrees, it's to get to 29. Um, it's a doomed domed roof structure, retractable roof, configurable seating on the lowest tier to make it the only stadium in the world, custom designed to host lots of different sports. The only time it was full, 55,000 Japan versus Brazil in football, October 2014. There's the team's perfect pitch. And we have four minutes or so until the game starts there will be a two minute break midway through both halves for water because it's going to be very hot and you can sense the nerves on some of these faces because this is a big game and the scots will be keen to uh, please gregor townsend we're just about to start both anthems the Italians largely made up of Zebre and Treviso players, 13 of their 15 playing their club rugby with those two struggling Pro 12 sides. See the anthems.
Well, we're just being told that um, a late call off. John Hardy appears to have pulled a muscle, went up the tunnel with the leg strapped and said he was out. And um, Ryan Wilson is starting, and by the look of it, Rory Hughes has been brought onto the bench. Chris Patterson. Yeah, good afternoon, John. Looking forward to this one. There's some international rugby in June. There's Leonardo Sarto. We're so used to him. Uh, this was setting the, the turf on fire or the artificial turf on fire at Scotson. But there's the Scottish lads coming together, just getting the final little words of encouragement and leadership from John Barkley. You can see Ryan Wilson there just with his arm around John Bartley, it's a late change, but Ryan Wilson is an experienced campaigner. He uh, He's comfortable at six, seven or eight. He'll probably, I would imagine, he's wearing seven, but he may pack down at six and John Bartley move over to number seven. We'll see how that unfolds. And WP now, well, he's making his comeback, not played international rugby for, it must be almost a year. And referee Paul Williams from New Zealand is going to be in control of a lot of it. Looking forward to this, hopefully see some tries and some really fast-paced action. Well, Mr Williams, the subject of some controversy, the Aussies don't like him on the back of some of his decisions. There's a call for captains in Super Rugby to be able to ask to go to video if they feel there is an incorrect call. Tomasa Allen about to get things underway in Singapore. Price finds the forwards. It's a penalty right away, obviously, to Scotland, and it is a good catch by Tim Vess, a long kick off by Tommy Allen. You can see the intent right away not to kick back, it was to run. He made good yards, and then from the really composed setup from Ali Price hitting Tim Swinson, who well set up the midfield ruck, and I think it was Italy were penalised for for being offside. And there's a man who made the tackle on Tim Visser, Esposito. He's a live wire Come himself. There. Some some danger across the back three for, for Italy, but I'm sure the structures that Scotland will look to employ under Gregor Townsend. A lot of them Move know down. the structure from playing it with Glasgow Warriors. And they've had a great time together as well, Scotland, so they look forward to launching the first attack here from halfway. Quickly rehashed line out into midfield. In behind. Taylor. Price. Nell. Already that uh, Gregor Townsend pattern, wider ball, loop. Well, Tullis involved in much of what's happened. Another penalty coming the Scots' way. Oh, great break by Barkley. John Barkley into the 22. Barkley is dragged down by an Italian defender. Price looks up. Long pass straight to Tullis again. Little chip kick it is this time. Could it be the first troll oh, that just went out? And that was Matt Scott chasing that delicate kick. And Scotland in the attacking mode. That's an outstanding opening to a test match from Scotland. A comfortable win from the line-out, and then we saw wide, wide attacking play from one side of the field to the other, and then as Italy tired and fell into the trap of defending with John Barkley, cut a lovely line from a delayed pass from Finn Russell. I think Finn Russell should have kept the ball in hand towards the end there. They gave time for Italy to throw in the line-out and clear the lines. Yes. Good. Line out from Bud the Kiwi, cleared by Gori, Eduardo Gori, the captain. And just to remind you, we're going to break halfway through this first half for a water break. Much of the talk yeah. about was how quickly the Scots want to play the game. This was quick transfer of ball. Yeah, that was an excellent delayed pass by Come Finn on. Russell. The, the, the three or four phases prior to that had been using the full width of the Not field, and across. there's so much experience in that lynch there between Finn Russell delaying the pass to John Barkley, who had a I wonderful got... line and, and caught the Italian Clean defense. Ball again from Swinson. One in behind pass, then that short one to Scott. Brock. Very quick ball coming back. Good tackle on Taylor. Nell secures. White, you're on the ground, you must support your body weight. Oh, that's a third penalty already. On the ground, must support against, body weight. Against Italy, you can hear 
Michele Campagnaro being told by referee Paul Williams that he's not supporting his own body weight, he's competing for the ball. Now, if he can keep his hands on the ball, he's fine, but if his hands go onto the ball, past the ball, it's deemed to be illegal. That's a nice offload there from Duncan Taylor. What the Italians have done already, they've already tried to fly line an individual because they're getting frustrated by the, the width and the ease that the Scottish players are playing with. Ford. Swinson shifted to Strauss. No, don't start it again. Tulis. Price is being told to use it. Shorter ball. Price, though, tackled by Dean Budd. Tulis again. Wipe out from Ford. Strauss. Scott's pack churning back, plenty of ball. Price. Tullis. Penalty coming the Scots way unless they score. Loose a ball, Howland has to chase back. They'll go back for the penalty. The Scots just getting a little bit lost in midfield, but uh, it's all Scotland. Yeah, it's, it's at tempo as well, I think. Conor O'Shea will be frustrated from an Italian the point of view because line. they haven't touched the ball. From 10, the whole back line. It's a whole back line off, off sides, says Paul Williams, and that comes from being put under sustained yeah. pressure. It's simple stuff Shot in a sense off. from Scotland prior to the mistake there, but you see coming back for the penalty. But simple stuff, but it's really aggressive ball carrying, clean ball being presented for, for Ali Price to pass it on to the next player. So they're, they're, they're Actually, attack shape looks very comfortable. They look as if they understand exactly how they're trying to play. They've been making good use of the time they've had together prior to going on tour and the, the, the opening week of being on tour. They look comfortable and they look like they'll be rewarded for their positive start with three early points for Finn Russell. Doesn't even take his time. First points of the game then to Finn Russell. The Scots dominating the early phases. Tullis in everything. Now seems to have shrugged off his injury, he hasn't played much rugby. Bartley with the significant break. Hardly Scottish weather. One of the bizarre things about the local weather forecast is it predicts zero snow. <laughs> Visser, looking powerful. Strauss in the clear out. Price looks up. Ford through that first tackle. Price eager to get going. To his right, Russell sends it high. Well taken by Allen. Gori thinks about this short side to Sato. Sato upended. <laughs> Who's there? Lost. Gori. Taylor collects. Blue. Stop. Yes, thank you. Gori again to. The fullback what? Padovani from Zebra, Eduardo Padovani. Longer ball to Hoyland. It's a bit of aerial ping pong. Sato. We know he can run. Eduardo Sato with a gentle chip ahead, almost made it, taken by Tulis. Swinson's there too. Barkley wants it left. Ryan Wilson. Counter attack from the Italians. Price has to go in with his hands and has to give away the penalty. Yeah, it was Andrea Lavotti who won the penalty for, for Italy. They're driving straight over the ball, completely legal. And then as Scotland lost the, the battle over the top of the ball, they then tried to win it back with their hands and being penalised. An interesting play of, Shot. or uh, I suppose, series of kicks there, Shot, and two different styles, really. I think the uh, Scotland looked to kick to compete from, from Finn Russell. Um, no, just... and, and then it, I, Italy sort of looking for as much distance as they can to try and put Scotland under pressure. Ultimately, Italians came out with a, an opportunity of three points. 
That was Ryan Wilson taking his time to get off the ground. Let me remind you, late change to the team. John Hardy unfit just before kickoff. Wilson's in. Yeah, Scotland had a 6-2 split on the bench, so that's uh, unfortunate for John Hardy, but as we said before, Ryan Wilson's very, very comfortable. Well, on the bench, Scotland had six forwards and two backs, and it's usually traditionally five and three. So a, a result of that late change, it looks like Rory Hughes has came onto the bench because the back row was already covered with Magnus Bradbury and Rob Harley, who can also play there, already on the bench. Scottish qualified Tommaso or Tommy Allen looking to level the scores in Singapore. And he's made it. So despite that early pressure from Scotland and that break from Barkley, it is three points apiece in this official test match and the humidity of the National Stadium in Singapore. That was a good kick by Tommy Allen, um, chipping over from over 40 metres, but they didn't have to work particularly hard for that try. Italy, they kicked long, they contested the breakdown and got the three points. That's a great take by Damien Hoyland. Ball's out. No, 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 no. Easy. actually quite clever play by WP now. And it looks like it's a bit negative, but he realised that the ball was out of the back of the rack and the Italians were first round to pick that up. And it was a clean pick up for, I'm not sure which Italian player it was, but WP now knew that it was part of the, the rack and he just stuck his two out and made sure the ball went into touch. Two Benetton, one Zebra player in the front row. This is Luca BG, the number two. Taken quickly, sent back by the back room Banda. Gory. Barkley flies up to make the tackle. Use it now. Gory protected. Not back by Sato, it'll be a Scottish liner. I guess what's happened since the first five minutes or so is, is none of the teams really had any huge multi-phase attacks, have they? No, there's been a lot of kicking, some, some of it poor, some of it more accurate, and it's good to see from a Scottish perspective that when Italy are kicking, they're under pressure. Gori was under pressure from Toulouse there, the kick was too short, and Scotland went back, possession, get a line out. Lots of line-out ball coming their way. Price, little lazy pass, gentle pass to Hoyland. No! Swinson at nine, picks up, puts his big mitts on that ball, gives it to Strauss, good Italian defence. Price, longer ball to the midfield, and it's Russell. Price, Nell. Strauss. Russell with those lazy hands to Wilson. Scots with lots of ball. Swinson again. Seven. Wipe out by Tullis. Skipped a player. Late layoff from Russell. Tulis working in partnership, those three boys. Russell to Taylor. Patient work, Chris some Patterson. Physical collisions, yeah. I think if Scotland could get one extra pass a little bit wider, they're, they're obviously trying to tire their Italian defence, and the defenders are, are up to it at the moment. But there's a little bit of space on the edge. Short of ball to Taylor, and Banda's in there with his hands. Oh, Great yeah, turnover good. by Mbanda. Gory, they're down the left-hand side, danger for Scotland, kick ahead, charge down though by Russell, Russell skips inside his man, layoff to Taylor from fullback. The pace has gone up a notch or two, Barkley, Barkley to Scott, to Dunbar. No. Just tempting these Italian jerseys yeah. offside, aren't they? They've got the penalty. Price again to Wilson. Strauss. Strauss taken down by Biji. Swinson thought about the pick-up. 
Christ to Russell. Russell with a gentle kick through. Campagnaro is back, knocks it back. He can play on. They'll come back for the penalty. That's an exhausting piece of play. It's over three minutes of ball in play there. And it was mainly Scottish attack. There's a lot of defending for the Italians to do. They did it bravely. And there was a lot of big collisions. And as I was saying, in the middle of that phase, I think if Scotland can get one more extra pass, it moves it a little bit further away from the, the heart of the Italian defence. This is how the, the, the piece ended. Scotland having an advantage, looking to chip the ball in behind. Campagnaro had that well covered. And will come back for the penalty. Time's not off. But it's very difficult to defend. It's very tiring to defend. And, you know, that three minutes of action there will be very, very draining for the Italians come the, the, the end of the game, certainly. Interesting. Scotland de decide not to take the three points or the opportunity to kick three points. And Finn Russell has a very accurate kick at the touch. And Scotland will launch from the lineup. <laughs> Leo Sato trying to, well, he might understand the call, but I'm not sure what, what he can do about it when he's not in part of the line out. No. Gory back to Allen. Allen with the scrambled clearance. Again, it's scrambled because there's so much kick pressure. It's Finn Russell, I think, getting through that time. Someone else from inside. It looks like Finn Russell's obviously hobbling a little bit. Um, I thought that just two or three minutes ago, maybe a, a knock or a bump. We'll see. Hopefully he'll stay fit. Peter Horn is involved in the bench. He, he's a, a good deputy, but we, we uh, you see just the left-hand side of the screen is Dr James Robson checking on Finn. And seems to be OK, but we want the creative players in the field. Taken by Tillis. Drive from Scotland, off the back from Barkley. Barkley to Price, longer ball out to Russell. Russell, Russell running right to left. Could be halfway through, delayed that pass. And the Italians half kick ahead by Padovani into the open field. Back goes Dunbar, taken by Campagnaro. Lots of blue jerseys back there to rescue, including WP Nell on this near side. The heavy cavalry arrive. Tulis thinks of picking and going, does so to the left with Barkley. Italians causing problems at ruck time. Just taking some heat out of the game. Nell picks and goes. Dell with him. Nine, use, please. Use. I don't think anyone got a touch on that. It's going to be a, an Italian frame. Now, there's a, a really good set piece yeah, attack okay. as well. And here, I think Esposito does reason well initially, but Finn should just give that a go once he's got the number 14. Esposito's numbers in his eyes, he can Scrum give that pass on to Duncan Taylor. Just left it a little bit too late. It's maybe a result of him. We thought he was carrying an awkward bump, not quite as explosive as he'd like, but Padovani put boot to ball. And it was an excellent. Chase back by Alex Denmar to pick up those pieces, but these are the little bits of detail that Gregor Townsend will want to see a little bit more accurate. The setup plays good, they just really want to finish these off. BG decoy run, Barkley has Barkley just stays on his feet beyond that first man. Good wipe out, Price again. Again, the Italians offside. Russell, Russell kicks to the left, there's a chase on. Taken by Padovani, the fullback. Padovani, the fullback, we know he can run. Look to offload. Barkley's there on the ball. And penalty against Barkley. No, it's against, it's against Ross Ford. Uh, I think Barkley was OK. A, a good referee in that, in all honesty. Uh, by Paul Williams. Excellent tackle by Ross Ford. Getting back and... and, and executing an excellent low tackle on Padovani, one of the, the real stars of the Italian side, but he has to roll away. He knew what he was doing with all his 108 caps of experience, just trying to slow the ball down. Well refereed by Paul Williams. Aye. Yeah, yeah, you were one. And that's John Barkley asking but the if he was why fine. There, it's because of him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, wasn't you. It wasn't me. It was him. <laughs> Chance for the Italians to attack. Barkley's seen lots of the ball. Tulis is very much in the game. There's the referee, Paul Williams. Looks like I've got a bit of blood here, guys. It's very clear with the players, isn't it? 
and good so far. I mean, even that was good refereeing because there was, you know, John Bartley was seeking clarification. I think it's a Scottish guy coming for looks like Alan Dale with a nick above the left eye. So he'll be yeah, yeah. assessed. Gordy oh, Reid will come oh. on for him, you would think. Yeah, Gordy Reid, again, who's he went in his 25th cap. There's a lot of experience John. there. Mm -hmm. Gordy Reid moving John. to we'll London Irish next, next season from now. Glasgow Warriors. You see, just over a minute to the first water break. We'll just use this as our water break now. Yeah, okay. if, yeah. In fact, when it comes over the refs, Michael Home Paul Holmes has decided no, just to yeah. use this. Keep standing tight, keep positive. I suppose break and play as a water break. Two okay. is taking loads of fluids on. It's very important to do that. Yeah. Okay, so this is the first of the, the two scheduled breaks. Yeah, well, this will be a two-minute break. You can oh, yeah, see yeah. both sets of players gathering in the heat. 28 degrees to go to 29 degrees. That's the score. Italy three, Scotland three, two penalty kicks. And let's get to the studio. See what the lads there think. Okay, thank you. Well, I have to say it was a very encouraging start, Scotland. Uh, in the first five ten minutes, the pace, the width that they were playing at, the fizzing of passes from Ali Price, but particularly through Finn Russell and you know, John Bartley went through almost opened up. But inevitably, I think with the temperatures and the conditions, it's just fizzled out a wee bit. Yeah, I think Gregor, he's obviously looked at the screen a fair bit. Be, they've missed opportunities, there's no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, he'll be looking to iron that, that, them problems out, you know, at half time, have a talk to the guys. But they've certainly missed at least two clear cut chances, which obviously takes you away and, and gives you a different uh, complexion on the game. Well, that was Andy Nicholl and Alan Tate. Two of our greatest players are in the studio, they'll be with you at half time. That was a very short two minute break. Francesco Minto Benetton at the back there with the ball, and they seem to have detached. It's going to be a penalty to the Scots. Dunbar wants the ball. I'm being told that despite what we heard from the referee, that may not have been the official water break. Instruction. If it felt short for us, it would feel short for the players, yeah, John. Absolutely. It's a, and it's a safety thing as well. I mean, it's you're playing at over 80 percent humidity, almost 30 degrees. You're wanting a product, you want the guys to be fit and healthy. And that hydration is so crucial. Good to see Finn Russell looks like he's over his his initial knock. This was Thank um you. this is a mall of obstruction. It was that would be fine if the the they stayed in that position, but it already oh, sorry, if it stayed in that position initially, but it changed oh. the lane, changed the mall, and thought it was obstruction. Taken by Wilson. Cross forward is at the back. Four. Four. Forward movement from the yeah. Scottish pack in blue. Price thinks about going left. Yes, nine. Well taken by Padovani. Hello. These two second rows of Fuser and Bud. What? Allen. Yes, all on there. Long to Russell. Blue! Stop! Padovani. Keep going. Hold there. It's an impressive player, isn't it? Eduardo Padovani. He, uh, he's covered, he covered both kicks there. One's box kick from, from Ali Price, and he, he rose wonderfully well high in the air, dominated the space and took it under pressure. And that second one there is reading and yes. understanding the game was exceptional because yeah, it was a good kick for Finn Russell. The ball travelled near on 60 metres, and Padovani was in the right place underneath it to not only catch it, but then send a great kick of his own back into the Scottish half. There's number 17, Gordon Reid, on the pitch, one of the great characters of Scottish rugby. Well, that didn't look like a very uh, organised or planned line-up, but Scotland have the ball. Ford pushing Strauss to the right. Price brings the ball back himself, wants to onto his left foot. Padovani gets through Nell's attempted breach. Sato picks and goes from the left wing. Taken down by Tullis. No! Leave the ball. Stand up. If you hold him in, then he can't roll away. Don't hold him in. Scrum, white ball. White ball. <laughs> Paul Hugham showing once again losing charge. Leo Sato's not exactly sure why, but. Scrum time. There's a good tackle by Ford and Toulouse. 
And then number two, Ross Ford has to roll away from in there. And what Paul Williams, the referee, is saying is he's not been allowed to because he's been held in. And he's warned the Italian players that you see the knees is in Banda and Lavotti. Lavotti. They're pinning Ross Ford in there so he can't move away. Good refereeing. And just to underline that, because a warning to the Italian team as well. A scrum there, Nell on this side. I think Nell would have been on the Lions tour, or certainly close. Had he avoided injury, so this is the part of the comeback trail. So energy is up, and the last couple of lineups have been driving malls as well. So what looks like a, a slower paced game than, than what we saw in the first 10 minutes is still very energy sapping for these forwards to to drive those malls, to defend these malls, and then in the same body position in the scrum, you're emptying all your strength in order to to try and win the ball or push opposition off the ball. It just drains the energy out of the legs, especially in 30 degree heat. The conditions are horrific. It's uh, 28 degrees to go to 29 degrees. Showers and cloudy, humidity 86%. And by the looks of it, the pitch is heavy going to add on top of that because that pitch is cutting up. I need you to come forward. You're too far overextended, okay? You're closing the space. I need you to hold your weight. Can you do that for me? Thank you. And the referee's saying that not too far away. The reason you want the, the, the front rows to be really close, almost ear to ear, before the engagement is to take away the charge. The charge is a part of the scrum that in the past was a cause of a lot of injuries. So you want the, the forwards to be, the front rows to be as close as possible before the referee says engage. And it's a matter of, a bind to it, it's a matter of folding in together. Picked up by Barbieri, the Canadian. Campagnaro, Michele Campagnaro. No! Big centre penalty against Barkley this time. He wasn't the tackler. You're over here, you're offside. It's a penalty against John Barkley. Now, there's different laws played in the Southern Hemisphere at the moment from the from the 1st of January that have been slightly different to the ones that we've been playing in Northern Hemisphere it starts the 1st of July but this game, although it's, <laughs> I think it's one degree above the equator yeah. Gregor Townsend and Conor O'Shea decided to uh, right. to play under the Southern Hemisphere laws right. because that's what they're going to change and I think that was one of them there where John Bartley in the last game he played that would have been absolutely OK but because there's new laws around the ruck he had to come back on his own feet so that's why he looked a little bit perplexed at the decision another excellent kick by the Italians so 25 minutes into the game and after the initial I say five or five to eight minutes from Scotland was really sharp there's not been a lot in the game since then two very even the match side the Italians have come back into it haven't they here's a all at the back is Ferrari Simone Ferrari of Benetton this big tight head prop he's 19 and a half stone six foot one in control Italy just edging forward the Scots trying to wheel it well done to uh, I think that was big. No. Swinson came through the middle. Nell is cleared out unceremonially. Gorry to Bud. Bud from Fongaray in New Zealand, six foot five, second row. Gorry again looks up to the uh, number eight Barbieri. We know he can carry. Played for Leicester. Good tackler. A little bit more uh, attacking now from the Italians. BG, the uh, number two. Gorry. He's on his feet. Mbanda. Big number seven. His parents are from the Congo. He still goes out there to coach some of the rugby players. Campagnaro. Oh, halfway through Hoyland. Taken down by Scott. Better play from the Italian. Slippy ball in all the humidity. Tommaso Boni. Shorter ball, was that obstruction in front of it? Taken on again, more and more the Italians coming into this, and Banda, penalty though to Scotland. 
Jason Princeton holding on. Yeah, good defence by the Scots. The, um, the Italians aren't going too far away from the breakdown. It's one pass play, it's exhausting stuff. You can you see, see how tired they are. Ford taking a knee, and he was really effective. He won the penalty there, but on two or three occasions prior to that, he was involved in the breakdown, and I thought Scotland could have been awarded a penalty. Once from Alexton Barr's work, once from Ross Ford's work, prior to the 1 the 1, but there's Alexton Barr with a big shot on him, Bamba. And then watch Ross Ford here. As soon as this tackle's completed, he gets his hands on the ball, gets his body in a good position, and he wins a penalty. Back comes Dell. I think we're seeing a few things, Chris, aren't we? It's really hot, it's humid, the ball's slippy, the pitch is heavy. A lot conspiring to make this a difficult game for these players, but they're doing their best, the Scots. Absolutely, and one of the reasons for, for playing here, I would imagine, is in, in two years' time, the, yeah. the Rugby World Cup's in Japan. These are the potentially conditions you could face in Japan, so it's an excellent test for that and preparation as well to see how the players react. Backward. Again, another spill. It was two to Price. Price dumped. Dell with two lists. Ford held by Swinson. Nine, use now, please. Russell. Russell picks up his opposing standoff kick. Again, nice kicks ball. diagonally, trying to get territory. Back goes Padovani. That's an excellent kick by Finn Russell. Are we pushing the back from his teammate, his club teammate, um, Leo Sarto? Gory, I think, for me, is it he's involved offside. there. He's offside he's in front of the play. But Tommaso Allen as well to catch it. Gory's causing obstruction. That should be a penalty to Scotland, but Tommaso Allen does take it well, then puts a kick in behind Finn Russell again, covering the backfield very well. And what, what I liked about what Finn did there was he ran first. There was a lot of space between him and the chasing line. So he ran first, assessed his options. And a lovely right footed kick into the Italian 22. Short to line out from the Italians, Biji. Intercepted though by Tulis, who's having a cracking game. Ross Ford taken when he was on the ground. Will uh, Price step on the gas? No, decides just to take his time. <laughs> just what Ross Ford needed. Well done, Ross Ford. He covered it, got down on the ball well. and then and the tackle was early, you've got to allow the player who's gone down the ball to come back to his feet before you attempt the tackle. And that time the Italian just flopped on Ross Ford, who's getting his breath back and probably got winded as well, so he'll take all the time he needs. And that's, a, that's the, the contrast in rugby. He now, as a result, if this kick is accurate from Finn Russell, he'll now be expected to deliver a pinpoint throw under pressure, out of breath, hurting a wee bit. That's international rugby and test rugby and how you... I suppose you manage your body through the, through the, or what the stress is you put through as the game goes on. Look, there's Ross Ford there getting there. He has to switch from being exhausted and sore to being accurate and really detailed with his throw. We talk about these throws being higher than a double-decker bus. Barkley's going to get this, moved it on to Ford. Barkley in rucking, ball comes back. Dell is there as well, in from the left wing is Visser. Tim Visser through the gap, but the referee's called that back for obstruction. You've, you've played contact with the man, you've initiated contact. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a planned move between scrum half and blindside winner Tim Visser. I think it's maybe Alan Dell that gets here just a little bit too early, and then he makes contact with Dean Budd who then in turn prevents Dean Bad making the tackle or attempting the tackle on Tim Visser. These are tight calls, it's, it's whether to... It, the determining factor is whether um, Alan Dale in that case moves, changes his line to block a defender or if he continues in his natural line, I think. Probably just got that one right, I think. It doesn't matter if the tackle was going to be missed, he just can't stop the defender attempting to make the tackle. Taken by Bud. 
Tulis is there just uh, disturbing. Gori, Eduardo Gori fishes from scrum One. half for the ball. Tulis is at the heart of everything. You've said that, John. Again, he's he's managed to swim his way through them all to get his hands in around the ball. So when the referee called use it to the Eduardo Gori, the Italian scrum half, he couldn't get the ball away. The mall then collapsed, which means the Scottish players don't have to roll away, don't have to, um, like they would do in Iraq, move away from the from the ball. They can just slow that down and run the turnover. I was thinking back to that water break. If that was, the, there is supposed to be a two-minute water break, we were told. And if that was it, it was less than a minute. So these players need all this hydration. You can see the sweat dripping off them in incredibly humid conditions. Yeah, I think by the time the referee... I mean, there was, there was a, a natural injury, I think it was in Allendale. You can see what John Bartley's uh, question on one or two different things about the line. It was some two lineups actually, where it looks as if the whoever's caught the ball hasn't been lifted in the air. Yeah, 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 held down. Um, but you're going back to the water break, it was an injury to Allendale, and I think around 18 and a half minutes. Now, the first water break was scheduled for 20 minutes, so the referee has made the decision, let's just do it now. So. I suppose it, I suppose the duration would have been two minutes, but the duration between him, you know, telling us that that was his decision to take it then, maybe made it a little bit shorter. But as I say, player welfare is number one, and these guys, although supremely professional and athletic, they have to be looked after. And how impressive he's been, John. Well, there's Ben Tillis, the uh, Edinburgh second row. He's been at the heart of everything. He's been carrying. He's been uh, securing line-up ball. He's been defending. He's had a good season with Edinburgh as well. Ben Toulis, a real hard working player. Played a lot of volleyball, his soft skills in the nice air and straight. catching. Nice and a very good group up in Australia with a, a multi sport background. And he's impressed, certainly asked this afternoon, and, and hopefully for him, impressed the coaches led by Gregor Townsend there as well. I think Gregor will be a little bit frustrated. I'd say Scotland have had most of the possession, most of the territory, but yeah, the, the score is still three each, and they'll be looking frustrated at one or two. Opportunities they've created that they've not, they've not executed. Listen, listen. Don't forget these players haven't played for a few weeks as well. We are you to hold your space. Yes. We are closing. You see we're closing. Stay where you are. Yeah, yeah. It's a big test for Nell here on this uh, near side as we see him on the left there. WP Nell, so influential, wasn't he, for Scotland? and would have made the Lions to coming back from, I think, a neck injury. Yeah, it's surgery in the neck. Um, I think it was like almost tw two injuries, almost, uh, with one game in between. So, you know, that makes it a long time out away for the game. And this is a pretty tough game. He played play 25 minutes, 20, 25 minutes for the Barbarians against England two weeks ago. And that was his, his, uh, his comeback. But, Come. It's very difficult Let's keep to come straight back into international rugby, especially in the conditions, as we keep saying. But they love it in there, the front rows, look at them. Quite happily do that all afternoon. The guys out back, out wide, they want the ball. These guys just love the technicalities and trying to get one up on their opposite number. Crouch! Boy! Set! Well, as so often is the case now, the uh, set scrum becomes a means of winning a penalty. And the Scots knew they had the upper hand there with Nell, who's tired, he will be tired, but they got that scrum moving forward, Dell and Nell. And that sets Scotland up with, what, five minutes to go in this first half with a try-scoring opportunity. Here's the scrum. Yeah, it took a bit of win in that scrum. I think, you know, for the, um, for Lavotte, the, the Italian tight head, he was angling in because he was under so much pressure from WPNL. And I see the fans who are there. A lot of Scots fans, there's a Scotland football shirt as well. as a rugby shirt. Some young kids enjoying it. Great to see rugby 
being trialled in different parts of the world, a global game as it is, but here's Scotland in the attack now. Toulouse again, Barkley has it in the middle of that. The uh, blue sea moves up the pitch, Barkley still has it, the Italians turning him, tries to offload it, it's free, Swinson just a yard away. Price turns his man, Wilson to obstruct. Toulouse, wow, what a reward it would be for Toulouse if he got over the line, he can only be an inch or two short if he is, that could well have been a try. It's certainly a penalty. Well, I wonder if Toulouse could anywhere near that line. Well, interesting to see if we go back and have another look at it. As tensions run high. An important time in the match, isn't it? Just before half time as well. Eduardo, take them back, please. John, take John Barkley's going to ask a question. Should you have another look? It looked as if Ben Toulouse was very yeah, close to. Getting the ball down over the line. Yeah. I'm not sure what was going on. I think it was a bit of a hole. Yeah. Nothing really in there. And then four blues coming late. Okay. Dived on the far end the ground. So not a lot in there, but he has coming late. So right. What's your penalty? Okay. So I was originally going for the penalty for offside. Okay. Okay. Four blue. So are you saying that it's enough to reverse the penalty here? No, I don't think so. But I'd have a word to. Yeah. All right, delicate John. refereeing. That could have been John. overturned. Eduardo. They're saying that Tim Swinson came in late after oh, offside. Listen, listen. So, listen, are you looking at me? Yes, yes, sorry, sorry. Oh, Stand there. John? Sorry, sorry. So, sorry. We're, going, yeah, we're going here for the original penalty. Yeah. Yeah. But, guys, let's play positive rugby. And I don't need your four running in and doing what he did after this, okay? Just listening. I don't need him to do that. I need you to have a word. Guys, let's play rugby. Restart here, penalty, okay? You've been captain. What do you now go back and tell your players? It depends. <laughs> it depends. I think what I would be saying, I would relay that message because it means that the referees and the assistant referees are heightened to it and anything... Especially when you're in the oh, ascendancy, as Finn Russell takes Strauss, it quickly. Strauss barges up, Nell is in there, Price. Price out wide to Russell with a little inside ball to Visser. Okay, Scott's Barnes. more in the van now. Yep. Back quickly from Barnes Dunbar blue. to Barkley, Barkley lays it on to Ford. Ford has Nell with him. Three-man Scottish ruck, Strauss again, Strauss takes the short route. Price with that machine-like... Backwards. Feeding of his Price on the loop, Price on the loop, Ali Price with the try, the Glasgow Warrior, the first try of the evening. He started it from the base of the scrum and Price with just a couple of minutes left with the first try in Singapore. Well done, Scotland. That was a brave decision, wasn't it? It took the quick time by Finn Russell, but the players reacted. Whether they knew or not, they certainly reacted really, really well. Under a lot of pressure from the Italian defence, it built through the phases. They protected the ball, they moved it from right to left. One or two fortunate bounces, but Ali Price is so sharp. Look at that pass. That's where the one's a little bit fortunate. What a pick up by Ali Price in the loop yeah. round. And then the pace and the power to finish. This is the end of the phase, maybe eight or nine phases. Alan Dell he actually does really well because he realizes he's losing control and he makes sure he turns his body so the ball's going backwards. And look at that pick up before it hits the ground by Ali Price. And the dummy. And then the, the dummy, crucially. Esposito and through Padovani's tackle, but that's an excellent piece of skill at a really crucial point in the match just before half time to score a try. Yeah. Bang on Chris Patterson, that's uh, Ali Price of the Glasgow Warriors. He's been playing well all evening. Yeah. I think yeah. Toulis yeah. is having a great game. Like a and as we drift up to half time in 28 degrees, the conversion is wide left and that was the end of the half the Scots Ali Price will have wanted Gregor Townsend the uh, new cool. coach will have wanted there's Finn Russell kicking delicately tonight Russell yeah well Scotland would want reward for the, the, the dominance and territory and possession they've had and it's an important point to score obviously they opted not to kick to touch they went quickly reacted really well and executed an excellent try Till his great hands in the air. Dark blue jersey set them all up. Barkley at the back with Ross Ford. We're into uh, the final plays of this first half. They could get the penalty if they want. 
Barkley still has offloaded to Price. Price wants to keep it going. Wilson. Wilson to Visser. Visser to Russell. Russell kicks ahead. Hoyland chases. Bad bounce taken ball. well by Hoyland. Campagnaro with the tackle. Quick ruck. Matt Scott to Russell. Russell chips ahead through to Visser. Visser off the left wing. What a great try. That is unbelievable. Two tries in a couple of minutes at the end of the first half. Russell's kicking. Pinpoint accuracy. Visser judged the bounce. Scotland. Well, that is some way to end one half. That's a phenomenal try. That's probably one of the greatest tries you'll see in the international series in June. This is the end of it. Finn Russell had communicated that. And Tim Visser, between the two of them, knew that that was a finish. But this started from the kickoff. A wonderful take from Toulis. An excellent drive from the forwards. The ball was then moved left to right to find space in the outside channels. A chip kick through that Damien Hoyland recovered. And then as the ball came back, really clever play between the left winger and the standoff, right. knowing each other's games. Excellent execution of the chip kick, and Tim Visser, he just can't stop scoring. He's a, he's a natural try scorer, an excellent finish. And as we were saying, the first try was important just before half time to get two tries just before half time, underlines the dominance that Scotland have had in this first half. No, 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 it was a try. Well, that's Pete Horn on the pitch. Uh, he's being told he can't kick the goal because he's just come on the pitch. If it's for injury, he should be allowed to. As Finn Russell obviously took a, a hit when he put that chip kick in. He did. So he should be allowed to take it. I, think that's, I need to double check uh, that, but I think he should be allowed to take uh, it. Just, just what I spoke about. But Duncan before. Taylor's going to step show up you anyway. Real positive yeah. clear release. Yeah. Then it makes more Two minutes of extra easier. time. Two tries to Scotland in this first half. And Duncan Taylor straight between the posts. And that's been an interesting first half for Scotland in the heat here. They are winning by 15 points to three. Two tries. One from Ali Price, one from Tim Visser and Chris Patterson. Your reaction? Well, I think it's excellent for a Scottish point of view to get those tries toward the end of the first half. They started the half really well, they finished the half really well. Two outstanding tries. Synonymous with the type of rugby we know that Gregor Townsend and his Glasgow team like to play. It's great to see Scotland playing in that as well. Thank you for your company. Half time score Italy 3, Scotland 15. Two quick tries. Thank you, Doogie. Alan, Andy, um, there's Pete Horn, he's on. The last video you saw there, I think, was Finn Russell getting a head knock. We hope he's OK. And this is going to be Peter Horn at 10. So a couple of changes from the starting 15. We've got two tries on the board. Scotland played well in that first half. Got through the gears. And you talked about the Grey brothers. This is the first time in two years there hasn't been a Grey brother in the starting Scottish 15. And it's interesting, if you look at this Italian team, largely Zebra and Treviso players, 13 of the 15 with those two teams. And those two teams were Treviso 10th, Zebra bottom 12th in the league last season between them. They won only eight Pro 12 games what? and lost 36. Taylor. That big Advantage. upright running style. Advantage blow. Penalty coming Scotland's way should they want it. Horns. First real touch of the ball, and it's going to be no a advantage. quick Price. penalty. Price, will he? Well, there's another nasty knock to Finn Russell on his cheek. Yeah, it looks like he's going to return to the play, doesn't it? Obviously, over the, the period of half time, he's been had some medical treatment, maybe a stitch or okay. a couple in there. Yep, okay. Italy have been penalised for advance, and after the kick went up, the players in front of the up. kicker must make an effort, a conscious effort, to run backwards before they advance. Oh. They didn't. And then Peter Horn just smiles. Smiles. Helping yeah. Finn Russell back on in his first duty. Is to kick well. We say kick the goal, the last one they took quickly and scored a try from. We've seen two or three going in the corner. John, John, no, the penalty, the penalty was before some was made. So we can't use that? No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> it's the same as the end we of the first half. 
Interesting. I thought you could, if it was for injury, I thought you could do that, especially as he's a, a, the player returning to the field. But anyway, the decision's been made to go to the corner. All right, Jordy, be away. Yeah, you're okay there. The driving ball's been from the line, it has been reasonably successful in terms of its execution, but we've not gone over the line from it yet. They've had some good drives. Let's see if we can get this one over. Tunis again. Influential player this evening, Tillis with two hands, Ross Ford is at the back of that ball. If they keep this going, it's another try, and it's Ford. And did he get the ball down? Well, that's the third try of the game, and Ross Ford just capitalised on what was a very tidy line-up ball from Tillis. Safe, secure drive. And try number three. Well, look it's at the gone. speed and the tempo that it's going forward. Never any doubt that this was going to be carried over the line. The only doubt would be in the ground, and it took Ross Ford a little bit of time to get it down, but there it is. Conclusive proof that from that concerted drive going forward, another quality try for Scotland. Those tries are really important as well, as well as the one just before half-time where it was all about attack and form rugby. You need the balance to your game, and there's a grunt up front providing you with five points as well. Interestingly, that try scored in 42 minutes, other ones are scored in 38 and 39. So, uh, a four, ultimately a four-minute period of the game has resulted in three tries for Scotland. Between the posts from Finn Russell, 20 points to three. The last time these two teams met was in the Six Nations, 29-0 Scotland won. But as we said, Gregor Townsend and his counterpart, Conor O'Shea, have made nine changes. Some enforced, some tactical. Tullis, safe as houses. Excellent catch of your head and the pressure. Leave the leg! So crucial to not only... <laughs> Retain possession or win back possession from the, the kickoff. But the accuracy, not only just the catch, but the, the presentation and the, the protection of the jumper all puts the pressure on Italy and they concede the, the penalty. The change has been made. Okay. Next one goes, understand? There's a warning. We're back here. I don't know exactly how many penalties, but certainly there was four in the opening two or three minutes against Italy. I think we must be up to over double figures against Italy, and it's a warning from the referee that. The next one will be a yellow card. It's a dominant pack performance with the likes of Dell, Ford and Nell very comfortable in the front row. Swinson and Tullis in the middle of that pack. The engine room commanding everything. Lucerta Price, Wilson, Dell does that little extra roll to protect the ball. Your feet. That's your man, Ron. Swinson, Wilson, Glasgow teammates. Oh. Look how narrow the Italian defenders are as well. So close together, the white jerseys. Seven of them in your screen there. That screen for the left-footed kick, if he wants it, he does, he's in the pocket. Padovani. Gori. Campagnaro. The bigger man out wide. Loose pass to Esposito. Play on, says uh, Mr. Paul Williams. We're in touch. No, in touch. We're She's in touch. corrected. Yeah. yeah, Scotland are in control, aren't they? You know, three minutes before half time, it was three all, and then that blitz, a no, two try blitz towards the end of the, the first mark. half, and the one opening of the second half the has put Scotland yeah. in control. And there, I just thought they had the Italians really, really narrow, and there was an opportunity to keep the ball in hand and try and put some width on them, but they opted to kick Good. it away, but still come out with the ball. That's the control that Scotland have at the moment. Very productive lineouts. Swinson that time to Dunbar. They come back where we came right. from. Visser. Strauss rolls the body away. First one. 
white. They were warned about a yellow card, weren't they? The next penalty. Eduardo. He was over the ball, he lost it, and then he played it again on the ground. That is now too many. It's a yellow card. It's been bad that's been shown a yellow card. You can't complain. He certainly had been warned too many penalties yeah. against the Italians. And that's even more pressure on the Italians now. Discipline is so often the, the determining factor when you play against the Italian teams. And it frustrates Conor Roche and his teammates. Swenson. Sex good. Barkley. No. Price calls for the forwards to come round the corner. You. They're there, taken up, I think, by Dell. Swinson, Tullis beside him. Pick and go in Italian danger territory. Price looks to release this one wider. Through the gap to Dunbar. Bit more momentum. Short ball to Wilson. Price finds Barkley. Barkley gives it to Dell. Move away now. Italian defenders throwing their bodies in. Russell, Russell with a little inside pass to Taylor. Taylor to Hoyland, Hoyland back to Russell. The flick to four. Oh, oh, oh. oh boy. The skills on offer. Little behind the back flicks. Scotland prize them open like a can of beans. And then eventually knock at the door and there's nobody home. Ross four. Try number two for the big hooker. <laughs> Just look again at some of the skills here. The build up plays it. Exceptional yep. to get to this point, but then there's so many good pieces of skill and detail in there. The composure and the skill execution to finish that, but the key to winning an offload is win the space. So in behind there, you can see that Duncan Taylor won the game line, got the ball away, as did Damien Hoyland, as did Finn Russell with a flick behind the back. Support plays coming from behind the ball, so you can add pace, you can add incision. That try it has so many excellent pieces of execution in it I'm delighted to see Ross Ford get his second try tonight excellent excellent attack and rugby from Scotland enterprise Chris Patterson isn't it you go you break the gain line and then keep that ball alive but there's detail there as well I mean there was that, although that, that looks high risk to a lot of people but it isn't because you can see the person you're passing to you're in behind the line the pace is coming onto the ball Sven Russell just slides that conversion out to the right hand side but what looks yep, high risk that isn't the, the players were trained to play like that yep. they've got the yep. understanding that the support players coming from in behind they're putting footwork on the defender in order to win the space so you can get your hands in behind the contact to give the offload a really good team try there which is unfortunate for Finn he couldn't add the extras but he's now been replaced Peter Horn's back in the field and it's a four tries for Scotland just hold just hold thank you Fisser puts right foot to ball. Padovani, the fullback. Good. Horn does his best to offload, does it well too. Henry Pergos is on at scrum half, here he is. Barkley, short ball to Robert Harley, he'll be playing against his flatmate. Leonardo Sato, the Italian winger, shares a flat with uh, Barkley. Swinson, he's enjoying a good game too. No. Tim Swinson, Pergos, eagerly it's scrambling for the ball. That's your man on top of it. Use it. Robert Harley. <laughs> well, Mbanda did well. There he is, the big number seven. Maxime oh, yeah. Mbanda from Zebre. And he's fought hard at most breakdowns, hasn't he? He's been, he won a penalty early on, he won a couple of turnovers in the first half. 
and he's putting himself in that position to win the ball. Excellent defensive play by Mband, and it actually comes from Scotland making more and more yardage with their carries because the defence are tiring. The, the, the Scottish players are getting further over the advantage line, which actually opens an opportunity for Mbanda to get his hands in. The Scotland support have to get there quicker, even although they're making yards and making ground in that defence, the support play has to get there, and you can't let players in over the ball nowadays because they're so difficult to remove. Wait for them to come down. Yes. Them up. Oh, I'm not here. Now this throw-in is going to be taken by Ornel Gega of Benetton. There he is, number 16, the first Albanian rugby player to play international level. There he is, Gega. On to is Federico Zani, taken though by this uh, number seven, Maxim Banda, who's having a very productive game. At the back there is Gega. And the Italians have won a penalty. The Scots will have to be careful. It's brought to ground. 19. Uh, uh, uh. 19. Entry. Well, it's penalised Rob Harley for coming in from the side, but in, in real time he was calling seven. Number seven, Ryan Wilson, to get out of there. And he didn't. <laughs> so it looks like Ryan Wilson's going away with it. Coming and around the side. Entry. And Rob Harley 19, coming around the correct. side. 19. It would be good to have another look at that 19. because it looked to me as if oh, Robert yeah. Harley came straight through them all and if there was anybody to be penalised, it would have been number seven, Ryan Wilson. But it's a detail in the discipline that you've got to you know, maintain high standards. This is all giving Italy an opportunity to get themselves back into the game. Gega then, lots of movement. Till is trying to obstruct. It looks slightly not straight to me. Barkley tidies up at the base of the lineup. Pergos wants his blockers for his kick. There they are, one, two, three. Just to shelter that right footed kick. Visser, bottom of your screen chasing. Taken by Esposito, runs into Dell. Gega acting at scrum half, eager player. Italian is coming more into this. Advantage. Advantage white, high tackle, blue three. Another penalty yep, coming the uh, Italian way. This is the big centre, Campagnaro, Michele Campagnaro. Gori. Gega has been involved in five or six passages of play. High tackle. Three blue. High. And that's pretty clear from the referee again, but what is good from Three a Scotland's blue. perspective is they're making Italy work really, really hard. They've had two penalties that they've kicked to the corner. And then uh, in Glasgow, not Edinburgh or Glasgow, Scotland have defended so particularly well. And then from that one, the line chase from Alan Dale, the loose head prop was outstanding. He made a tackle on Esposito, the, full, oh. the, the winger, and then a tackle on Campagnaro as well. That's a Sam. tackle from one, two, WP now. That's not the high one. That's the one where he knew the penalty was playing advantage for a high tackle. So his next oh, tackle was nice it. and low. That's what I'm here for. But he's had a good outing, as we see the front row right. being replaced. Thank you. Dale Ford and Five WP on. Nell all leaving. Right a good shift from that unit. Impressive in the front row and the scrum and the line out. And busy around the park. Balls up. Mbanda secures. No! Gorry barks at his pack. On side. Set up the ball. Fusser and Bud were there. Harley just needs to get back on side. They come right, Mbanda, into the loving arms of Robert Harley. Gega to Bram Stein. The uh, replacement seems to be on from Benetton, the, originally from South Africa. Allen, Campagnaro, Campagnaro static ball to Padovani. Good flooding defence from the Scots. Ball was available. On side blue. Big Gordy Reed is on Sato against many of his uh, club mates at the Warriors. Fraser Brown. Leave, leave, leave. Ball available. Ambanda. Good clearing out. That's a good clear out from the Italians. Swinson in with the tackle. They're trying to hold him up for the mall. 
The ball, ball spills out. No, no, it's a Scotland's ball. Will they counter? Pergos. Pergos looks left. Long spin Advantage pass. Was that slightly forward to Visser? Visser puts his ears back. Visser kicks ahead. Infield to Horn. Horn will try to judge this bounce. Sato, he's got Sato, brings him down. And there are plenty of players on top of Sato. Better game now this second half. Tommy Allen, kick ahead. And is there anybody home? It's Swinson who's just being, being attended to by the medical team. You can just feel them trying to suck the air in. Look at Swinson, he's not happy. <laughs> he's Oof. absolutely exhausted. I must say that the second row for Scotland have put a huge work rate in Toulouse and Swinson in attack and defence. Every contact's been maximal. They've been a huge work rate as you see Dean Bad returning from the Sinbin. Thank you. But yeah. The game is opening up as well, yeah, isn't it? I mean, there's two or three turnover opportunities here. Tim Visser getting away from a lovely pass by Henry Pergos. Again, maybe could have kept the ball in hand. But Rob Harley making an impact in and around those breakdowns as well. It's good to see the work rate that these guys are, are adding and continuing adding as the, the fatigue yeah. really is setting in these, these conditions. Oh, are we good? When the guys haven't played for two or three weeks either oh, as well, it's hard to keep match fitness, obviously. Through training, they will have bounce games, they will play conditioned games at training but nothing quite replicates match, yeah. that that match practice that these guys won't be exposed to unless you're John Barkley or maybe Duncan Taylor for the last three weeks to try Ross Ford is having a break uh, on for him is Fraser Brown on for the Italians we now have Andres van Schalklik the uh, Zembri player Bram Stein from Benetton Barkley again Barkley's had another of those games those steady yeah. games Gordon Reid Harley. Pergos to Barkley again to Visser. He's going to be called back because the flag has gone up. Just to indicate that he was in touch. James Robson. It is incredible James Robson wasn't asked to go on the Lions tour. Given yeah. what he's done. Yeah, he's, he's been in so many Lions with James Robson. Dr. James Robson, the head of medical and he's so influential around the world rugby yeah, not just Scottish sure. rugby he certainly patched me up a few times was he a doctor and physio in your day John? he was the physio yeah I think he was oh, responsible boy. for sticking me in an ambulance once at Murrayfield on the back pitches oh, and yeah. um, the Italians were down to 14 men there for a while for 10 minutes but they're back up to 15 little bit of a break yeah, and there's the ball. water break. This yeah. is the uh, two minute water break we were promised. It seems shorter in the first oh, no, half yeah. of the players having their break. Yeah, then if I have another look at a try. This is Ross Ford's yeah. first try, isn't it? Just after half time, after yeah, 42 yeah. minutes. A real powerful, dynamic drive. Excellent. And then look at this play inside to Duncan Taylor. That's called between Russell and Taylor. Then Hoyland coming from behind, hitting the ball really hard to Finn Russell, who then put a little bit of footwork on the last defender and dropped the ball around the back to Ross Ford. It's not a risk. You can see Finn Russell looking at Ross Ford. He knows where he is. He knows that support line's coming in behind his, uh, the, I suppose, the composure just to drop off. And it took a bit of finishing as well from Fordy. A wee sidestep, a bit of power and driving over the line. Four tries for Scotland. Different tries, which is excellent from supporters to see that they can score more than one way. They can score wide, they can score tight. Gregor Towns will be very oh, happy with what he's seen so far. As you say, plenty to be at least enthusiastic about, maybe happy. Good read again by Tullis. Pergos, Visser. Blue seven! Stop! Esposito. Into a sandwich with Magnus Bradbury. Magnus Bradbury making an impact right away. I think he's came on for, I think maybe Swinson and Rob Harley moved up into the second row, but yeah, a, yeah. it was a two man tackle between Xander Fagerson and Magnus Bradbury. And see, there's a bad knock just in the head of well, one of the players. I think it's maybe plenty it? of blood around there. Yeah, Chicharelli, I think he actually caught maybe Xander Fagerson's boot as he tried to tackle them all. This is a hold up tackle. Number 20 working hard, and that's it's Ferrari number 13. He's pulls. That's not stopping. Uh, I think he Xander smashed Fagerson's, it off somebody's knee. I don't know, Xander Fagerson, so it looks like he pulls his foot to try and tackle them all, and the studs just catch him on his head as it comes up. Does he 
Does oh, it pull he's on the sole of a foot. Oh, yeah. Sacharelli, you're right. No, it's a, yeah, and he just, hey, his head went hey, down and hit somebody's studs. Okay. We've got blood everywhere. Yeah, you need to patch that Let's remove them. and be off. But that was a, you know, a great impact. You're looking yep, for an impact you. from your replacements, especially, we keep going on about the, the, the conditions, but especially in conditions like that. And there you had a fullback, or an Esposito, so the right winger, running at the attack, and it was two replacements who, who stood Time up, delivered on. the tackle, held the player up, and Scrum won the turnover. You know, thinking back over the game, the Italians really haven't had any possession to get phases together from. There's nothing they've done yet to suggest they've gone forward much. No, I mean, they've not had a lot of territory, they've not had a huge amount of possession. The possession they have had has been you know, probably played off scrum half, one out players. You couldn't, you know, underline what their attacking structure was. And I think that's a positive from Scotland's perspective because the defence has been aggressive. Yeah, and then, if you, you've had more possession, uh, 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 more opportunity you, to control you. the game. The one thing that's maybe a little bit concerning was that, that period that where Scotland gave away three or four penalties in quick succession. They looked to tighten up their discipline um, a little bit as, as ahead to Sydney to play Australia next weekend. Well, there's the reshuffle pack. Gordon Reid at loose head. Xander Ferguson at tight head. Robert Harley left second row. Magnus Bradbury this side. Bradbury, much Boy. thought of him for the future, don't you think? Good Absolutely. young player. Good hard young player. Good ball carrier. Very tough. And these guys, these young players who come into the international arena now are prepared so well and they're ready for it. But very rarely are they not hard and tough and well drilled because the, the experience they have in their, in their age grade and their professional development. A lot from other players, senior players at their clubs as well. So much shared learning that allows these guys to come in and hit the ground running when they reach international rugby. Pete Horn, part of a famous like rugby yeah. heritage Down. in Cooper. Move. His dad heavily involved, his brother doing really well in the sevens. Yeah, George has been outstanding in the sevens as well. He's come half. You see Fraser Brown. Scotland will really look to this last 20 minutes to to keep the pressure on Italy, get your structures together. Remember, it's just a new team under a new coach, a really important 20 minutes in the in the future development of the team, not Over. just to relax and think the game's won. Tullis again it was who sealed that ball, short the ball to Barkley. Another penalty coming the Scots first. way, will they run this? Ruck first, you were beaten by the ruck. That's Giga getting penalised. Again, I think the, the initial threat on the ball when it was a tackle and you're allowed to use your hands as a defender was cleared out so then the tackle became a ruck and then he then came in to put his hands on the ball which you can't do Horn safely into Italian territory 20 minutes left just under in what's been an enthralling game just a little glimpse into what Gregor Townsend's trying Same to do yeah, I think so. I think the um, I think what all coaches try and do is get a balance to your game that allows you to play more than one way. It allows you to make effective decisions. It allows you players to express themselves, provide a structure for them to kind of control the game. And I think we've seen that so far. And here's another drive by the forwards at the line out. Fraser Brown in control of the ball. Longer ball. Straight out to Hoyland. Hoyland on that right wing gets inside his player. Down that uh, far side goes Matt Scott, wiped out by Horn. No! Pergos tries to get it back quickly to Bradbury. Bradbury into contact with Harley. Barkley just knocks that on, the slippy ball Bandage. taken off by Mbanda. Allen is a swamp by Blue Jerseys. Let it go, Blue! Campagnaro. That's a good clearance by Campagnaro. Again, you know, take that last attack from the line and in, in, in isolation for Scotland. They'll be very happy with it right up until the understanding the, the knock on but from John Barkley. But the, the drive was good, the transfer from, from the drive to the wide channel is a really good piece of decision making by Matt Scott to take the space up the touch line and get in behind the ball car. Then oh, yes. the, the, the attack found their shape really well. Oh. Although it ended up with a knock on from John Barkley, oh, yeah, that's a far better problem to have than the players not knowing where they're going, what shape they fall into when they're near the opposition line. So that's a good sign for Scotland, just unfortunate for John Bartley that in the sweaty conditions he couldn't keep a hold of the ball. 
Right. Time stays off. Sub. Ten. Geordie, stand in front of the mark. Please don't let them throw. Sounds Substitution, like ten white. Tommaso Allen's coming off. He'll be replaced by Carlo Cana, who I think is an excellent young player. Very similar for, for those who watch. Thanks. Since Pro 12 rugby, he's quite similar in many ways to Finn Russell, Carlo Cana. He likes to chip kick, he likes to mix his game up. He's a threat with the ball in hand. He's quite expressive. So he's on in Jersey 22. Dunbar, late pass to Bradbury. Pergos with a planned move in behind to Hoyland. Hoyland, can he get his man? No, it's taken well by Cana. Rueful smile from Gregor Townsend, straight off the training pitch that was in Scotland, straight back into action, Horn, Horn long, right to left pass to Taylor, Taylor the same to Visser, Visser a little offload to Scott, Scott has Dunbar with him, Pergos, Bradbury, Bradbury to Barkley, looked to give him the late pass, Pergos, Horn, longer ball to Tullis, Pergus on it again, Horn, Wilson, Wilson half through the gap. Pergus tracking all the way, Fagerson makes those vital couple of metres, Pergus again, Dunbar to Bradbury, intercepted by Mbanda, Mbanda probably won't be able to get to the length, gives it to Campagnaro, could this be an Italian try? It is, Campagnaro! Loose play by the Scots, and the Italians get their first try of the game from Michele Campagnaro. Well, the Italians have came alive, haven't they? That, from that turnover, it's the two best players, I think. Well, this afternoon, Campagnaro, the try scorer, he's been heavily involved. He's a threat with ball in hand. It comes from the, the knock forward by Magnus Bradbury, and then I think Italian's best player, Mbanda, he strikes first. He gets his hands free in the tackle as well, and Michele Campagnaro just won the... Premiership in England last year, with uh, last week, sorry, with Exeter. He's on the end, runs a good support line, has a pace yep. to make it. Two of the Italian's best players of the afternoon combined to get their first try. Well, Campanero, as you said, has played well in this game, and that was just a pass to the shoulder of Magnus Bradbury, not clear. Picked up by Mbanda, this uh, flying machine of a number seven, and the Italians. They'll have some hope now. Tikana's first attempt to go comes back off the upright. That'll be frustrating for Matt Taylor, the Scottish defence coach. Defence coaches pride themselves on not having the line broken or not having a try scored against them. They want a, they want a zero on the scoreboard, but then secondly, they don't want any tries conceded. And that comes from a, a turnover and some pretty astute, quick attacking play from the to the Italian star players. Picked up by Federico Zani. Violi, the scrum half. Back to this youngster, as you said, Kana. It just shows you, doesn't it? You could be in control, and then one loose pass just in the wrong place to somebody's shoulder, and within six or seven seconds, you can give away a try. Well, that underlines international rugby, isn't it? So quickly, mistakes are, are, are pounced upon, and, you know, it's it, just, I suppose, that's a fine line, the details and margins that people talk about that that's a physical example of it really and it, what happens next for Scotland is the important thing I think that they're comfortably in the lead they're playing well it's just what happens as a result of that try how do they change your game that's a great throw and a great line out take double pull in behind to Hoyland Hoyland to Horn Horn tries his best to make the extra bit of uh, territory Pergos they keep coming this way Bradbury flooding defense of white jerseys, Pergus looks up, it's that increase in pace, extra pass from Wilson to Harley Reed protects, Reed picks up the ball, sneaks round the left hand side of the ruck, no scrum half it's going to be Horn Horn to Hoyland and the Scots only five metres away from the line, Bradbury Bradbury in there, gives it 
This time Pergus longer to Wilson. Wilson cuts back inside. Reed with the clear out. Scotland on the front foot again. Shorter ball to Barkley. Pergus barking at his players. Ferguson. Ferguson does well to stay up. Good clear out. That was Bradbury on that far side. Longer pass. Fraser Brown. Pergos to uh, Fagus and a Fagus and only what? Six, seven inches short. Bradbury's there too. Brown is there and somebody's sneaking around that right hand side. Knock on. Ah, it was uh, Matt Scott. Knock on, boy. Yeah, it's Matt Scott after 10 phases, just getting too eager to score the try. Again, Scotland building the phases. That's Matt uh, Fagerson. Xander Fagerson, sorry, thundering onto the ball. Takes a bit of stopping, doesn't he? And then. The support gets there, and from this ruck, Matt Scott sneaks up the right-hand side, is just knocks the ball on as he comes to to try and dot down to score the try. But we asked, you know, what Scotland's reaction would be to conceding the try, and it was pretty good up until that point. And see the ball just squirting out to the right-hand side. It must have been a call from the assistant referee for the knock-on, I think. But their execution off the top of the line, a throw to the back of the line out and an excellent set piece move almost freed Damien Hoyland. And then into their attacking structure in the, um, the Italian 22 pretty well. Just hold that patience for one or two phases more, and I'm sure they'd be rewarded with another try. There's an opportunity here for the scrum as well to really go after the Italian scrum. You're five metres from your own line quite often. After being Scott, under pressure, the defending team think the the hard work's been done by winning the scrum. They just have to pack down and clear it. But psychologically, I think you can really go after as a Scotland scrum. They can really go after the Italian scrum here. And if you don't win the ball, you can certainly make it very, very difficult for the Italians to get a clear exit. It's been a good game. 70 minutes gone. We have uh, Robert Harley in the second row, up against his flatmate, Leonardo Sarto. There he is on the far side, I've mentioned that before. Sarto, the left winger. And um, we're in the last 10 minutes. OK, get him on, please. Of what's been a gruelling game. Can you get 13 wide off? Campagnara sounds as if he's leaving the field now, the uh, Italian centre. I need him off the field. Tom, Thomas Benvenuti coming on. <laughs> Over 40 caps for Italy. The Tobizo player is um, he's experienced a powerful ball strong carrier one. as well. Big strong player, isn't he? Yeah. Benvenuti always carried lots of muscle. This could be a key scrum for the Scots if they can get this Italian pack in trouble. Crouch. You've got to stay straight. The referees are, should reward you if you stay straight. If you turn in or go down. He'll be under pressure, but Gordon Reid here just drives straight with a pack straight back towards the Italian line. Uh, good scrum. Oh, something happened off the ball. Uh, was Henry Pergos was upended. Just watch him go. Ah, 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 21. Jordy, just watch that there. Yeah, I'm interested. We're seeing that. Uh, uh, we just saw Pergos being tossed up in the air. Thank you. Well, it looked no, like no, no, he landed no, on his no, back, no. but we'll have another yeah. look. I'm sure that the referee will refer this to the big screen. A bit of space. Time is off. How much? Just wait. Come with me. After the whistle was blown, 20 bright, he yeah. has lifted blue player over. OK. Just want to check whether he has gone through... Horizontal. Okay. Before he's been brought down onto his back. You want to have a look? Yes, please. Okay, right. TMO, are you there? Fuji, we're looking at potential foul play against White. Number 20, White. Number 20, potential foul play. Correct. We'll oh. check. Yeah. This is Bram Stain. <clears throat> it happens on the far side. So Stain, we think, is at number eight. Ball pops out. Pergos, there he goes. Pergos. Hmm. I think his initial reaction, Stain, he realises, I don't think there's a huge amount in it, he's just trying to flip, you can't see from that angle, but almost Henry Pergus is entitled to try and get in the ball, and Stain's just kind of flung his arm and tossed him up in the air, but you can see his initial reaction is almost to, to help him up, which sometimes can be a giveaway 
He certainly landed in his back, there's no doubt about the land on his shoulder or his head. And it, it never drove Henry Pergos out of the, the ground. He certainly deserves a warning and a, a penalty that was Here's already that old coming. Angle pole. Yes. Yes. These are all angles. Those are all the angles. Yeah, only the three. Angles. Okay, thank you. So what we can clearly see is after the whistle, 20 white has lifted up the blue player past the horizontal and he's landed in a dangerous position on his side. Do you see the same picture? We well, have lead. Okay, thank you. Captain! 20. Uh, uh, John, can I just have a bit of space, please? I think even Captain. Barclay shouting it's nothing. So what we've got, after the whistle's blown, 20 has lifted the halfback, yeah. past the horizontal, and he's landed in a dangerous position. It's foul play, it's a yellow card. You've got to protect players. That's uh, the bottom line of international rugby. Stain wouldn't have uh, have been thinking of injuring Pergos, but you've got to be really careful how you ensure someone lands. He picked Where's him John? up underneath John's his knee. On. It's a stupid movement from, from Stain. Yeah, you're not the captain. Uh, you know, it's it's it's, it's, it's silly, it's stupid, he shouldn't Trump. have done it. Blue. He obviously didn't realise, I don't think, that he was going to flip Actually, Henry Pergos so far up in the air, but he shouldn't really be in that position anyway. A defence of him is he didn't drive him into the ground, he just flipped him away. But, you know, player welfare, player safety comes out. Have another look, his right arm does hook his leg a little bit. Probably worse than we thought initially and probably does deserve a yellow card. But it's now time for Scotland to strike. Well, they'll be up against 14 men for the remainder of the match. No number eight at the heels of that Italian pack. Stay there, no, 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 eight feet. And the Scots trundle forward. The ball is at Ryan Wilson's feet. The Italian pack goes up. It's You're going up. to be a scrum again, says Mr. Williams, the referee. Well, the Italians here are scrumming with seven players, seven versus eight. And, you know, most players, or most, I suppose, decision makers within the team will say you defend the first point of attack by putting eight. Italians on that scrum. So even though it's a back, you can get some doing it eight and eight. Yeah, you sacrifice space elsewhere, but you're you're making Scotland attack the space and find the space. If you just leave seven on there, I, I believe Scotland will just drive us over. As you can see, there is Esposito coming on to the flank of the scrum cap. The so have now gone eight on eight. So the decision for Scotland is: do you keep the pressure on and attack that scrum? Or do you move the space to where that winger had came from? We'll find out because the Scots now now up one in the back division. Pogos looks anxiously for the ball. He's being told to use it. Wilson, Wilson directly to Horn. Horn all the way around. Pogos. Bradbury. Bradbury legs pounding away. Pogos. Barkley. Fraser Brown. No! Horn, Horn hit hard, this time by Gega, Gega out the other side to Hoyland, and Hoyland with that little pass from Taylor, the Scots kept possession, Gregor Townsend delighted, the impetus was with Scotland through the hands, and another try as Hoyland sneaks in, the grateful recipient of the generosity of Duncan Taylor, Scots very much in control. That's excellent, wasn't it? Again, control under a huge amount of pressure. The Italians are coming off the line really quickly until they get to the edge where they've got a two-in-one situation on Sarto. And it, you're right, it's an extra pass from Duncan Taylor that makes it. Pergos draws in the first defender, then Taylor just brings Leonardo Sarto in. And as soon as he turns in, slips it out to Damien Hoyland, who gets low and finishes really well in the right-hand corner. A good sustained build-up. Good attack from Scotland and a good try, the fifth of the afternoon. It was always going to be hard, wasn't it, for the Italians? They were down a man in the backs. Scottish scrum was steady. Wilson fed the back division, Horn involved twice. And then that try down the right-hand side. Did you get the reward for maintaining possession when you're so close to the line. There's no backfield for the Italians to cover so the, the fullback can come up and almost fill the gap that the... The back row players, uh, uh, Stain would, would have been covering. 
So they still had to find the space, Scotland, and they did it really well. Superb kick by Peter Horn from the right touchline. Mike Blair delighted. The ex-internationalist and um, British Lions now, the skills coach, Mike Blair, the ex-scrum half. There you see the travails of the expat life. Canna. Wilson. Wilson just varying the point of attack. Pergos. Tulis. Tulis into a double Italian meat sandwich. No, don't hold him there. Pergos looks back to Horn. May he take it off his right foot. He does. Good. Chased by Rory Hughes. Had been beset by knee problems. Good blindside rush from the Scottish defence. Little kick ahead to Taylor. Taylor goes back. Will this sneak into touch? It will. That's the cruelest of bounces. It'll be an Italian uh, line out to Scotland just inside. That's a, that was a good kick. It was a good kick because they're under pressure and uh, the, the line to Matt Scott came in to shut off the pass and shut down the attack. And then because Italy were on the back foot, they had to kick. There's a really good attacking kick into the corner. Bravely taken, straight, long it was, Bradbury. Pergos pointing. Pergos keeps the ball in play. Hoyland's under it. Hoyland with the big jump, taken by Sato. Beats the first man, Gordon Reid. Reid, though, drags him down. Tackle! Roll. Yeah, Stephen Blue. Ryan Wilson made the tackle. Yes, yeah. And then he just lay there too long, not allowing Leonardo Sarti to present the ball. Time off. Well, Italy will be frustrated. 34 points to eight. It's five tries for Scotland. There's looking at their stats prior to this in the Six Nations, and, and the one that jumped that? out from last year's Six Nations was that Italy conceded 26 yeah. tries. They only scored six, but they conceded 26 tries. So I think they have to tighten up Bobby's defensively. Obviously, they're. Um, the discipline contributes to that as well. But from a Scotland point of view, I think they'll be very happy. Gregor Townsend looking on, Gavin Vaughan, Matt Taylor as well. They'll be they'll be happy with what they've seen. And, and the main thing I think will please them is that Scotland look comfortable in the structure and the attacking structure and the defensive structures that they're employed as a new coaching team. There'll be mistakes they'll obviously want to look at, understandably, in every game, but I think they'll be very happy with the execution and the, the desire of the guys to, to play an attacking brand of rugby. Leave him in the air. Yeah. The frustrating thing for the Italians is they've not really Leave had phases of play to even assess their attack. They've hardly... They've counter-attacked for their one try, but they've hardly set up any of these attacking platforms. That was a penalty given away by the Scots, but here's a chance for Italy to create something. Nineteen is Dries van Schalkvik, played for the Sharks in Natal. Slightly disorganised, and Banda though in Banda, plenty of abrasion with from a Banda. No, yeah. Made quick ground. Advantage. Van Schalkvik, little chip through. This could be a try unless. Um, well, Taylor got back in time. He's hurt in the process, but it looks as though there's a penalty. Yeah, there's a penalty coming, a penalty advantage. I see Duncan Taylor did wonderfully well to get back to cover that. Excellent okay. awareness and reaction from the fullback. Hopefully, yeah, the, yeah, the guys aren't the... badly injured. There's a full blooded commitment Time to the off. ball. This is kind of just a last minute decision to chip it through. Almost looked as if Boney was in front of the kicker anyway, but a big collision Ooh, there. That's a collision. Not As I say, they're both fully committed for the ball. So High speed, run, both running flat out. out. That's it in slow motion, and there's a big collision. Let's hope both players are okay. Your job, not mine. Well, that's definitely a head knock for Kana, isn't it? He took the full weight of, I think it was Taylor's shoulder. As you say, he might well have been in front of the kicker. But good defence, dear yeah. Dr. James Robson, helping Duncan Taylor of Saracens. And, um, it's windy, doesn't it? It's windy more than yeah. anything else with that big collision. And I think why it's so good for the fullback yeah, well, to get back and cover this. His, 
his focus is on what's happening on his left hand side so he's coming up to get out his his role is to take the last attacker so that's a guy in the furthest right if the ball gets there so you have to be in a position to make that tackle but because he's going over there quickly he's been able to turn and get back and cover that kick from Canada that was really executed really late and that's just you know in the, in the final minute of the game to be as sharp mentally and physically to get back and cover that was excellent for Duncan Taylor who has had two or three caps at fullback before but no he took a, a blow and then I think it's Tomasa Boni who is getting asked to leave for a head injury assessment. The well, well no, hang on a minute, like Chris. If, if they even yeah, suspect like yeah. concussion, there is no head injury assessment. Well, it sounded as if the no. he the wanted him off, but insisted, if he yeah, he's okay, going to get him off. Yeah, if if you suspect yeah. concussion, there is no HIA. He doesn't come back on. Yeah. If there's a collision you're not sure of, then you can do the HIA. It looked like Boney was taking his place to play on the referee and forced that change, which is excellent. Last attacking play of the game for the Italians. Delicate kick through from Canna. Advantage. Whoa, 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 whoa. There's one H white. Knock on in the line out, scrum 15. Scrum 15. The clock's in red, it must yep. have knock on, just must have happened before and the clock went into overtime. We see um, Tommaso Allen back on for the, the injured Boney. So, until they do have 50 men, this is an opportunity for them to try and finish right, in a high. And for Scotland, this is an opportunity to, to really 16. take pride in the defensive line. Let's go. Big scrum again. They'll have to mark that blind side. It'll be Damien Hoyland's responsibility. And then the key defender for Scotland is, is Henry Pergos. See him there with his arm strapped just behind Ryan Wilson. He's telling his standoff Peter Horn if the ball comes out, I'll get the inside player. Depending on where the, the left wing for Italy is standing will determine how far over Henry Pergos can go. So watch Henry Pergos here and his role in defence. Last play of the game. Italians. Benvenuti, the big replacements on. Barclays on the ball. Penalty to the Italians. They'll play on. Violi picks some of the big men. Violi again looks right. Zana. Kana with that long pass. Could this be? Oh, good score. If that is a score by the Italians. Esposito. 81 minutes on the clock. And the Italians just rubbing a little bit of salt into Scottish wounds with direct play up front then two good passes the last one the long one from Canna and um, this is a well engineered try that long loopy pass yeah it's a, it's a long pass it's finding Esposito who's played well hard runner on the outside channel but you can see Duncan Taylor and Rory Hughes both coming in to take the same man and the ball's in the air for a long time there look at that long floaty pass so Duncan Taylor's gone in trying to overread the play to shut it down so he should have been wider, but Esposito still does well under pressure of two players to score in the corner. Yeah. Apologies, but um, the clock in the corner of the uh, screen may well have been incorrect if we're playing on now. Certainly restarting with what appeared to be 80 odd minutes on the clock and well into the red. So Italy play on. Let's play 90 minutes for laugh. Cana. It was out to Benvenuti. Benvenuti, and it was Padovani. Penalty to the Scots, cleared away just to prevent anything happening, I think. Taylor takes it. We've played 83 minutes, according to our clock. Mr Williams still playing yeah, on. I heard the hooter as well, just as the, the ball was kicked off for, uh, um, for the resume after the conversion. So if you want to kick it out and end the game... So this is one of the new laws. If they want to end the game, they have to take the tap first, yeah. then kick it out. If they kick it out, Fool will take the line out. But they've opted to kick out in Scotland. Came out on top, John. A fantastic start for Gregor Townsend, isn't it? Well, there you are. John Bartley, the captain, will be happy. A good barrel load of tries here to give Gregor Townsend his first win and his first game in charge of the Scottish international rugby team. And the final score here 
Chris, they'll be happy before we give the score away. Scott, they'll be happy. Yeah, they will be happy. A good start. Some really important periods in the midpoint of the game after they lost its its, uh, its tempo a little bit, but striking just before half time with two fantastic tries and after half time, five tries in total, and a good win for the Scots. Well, there you are, the expats again struggling in the heat. Um, the Scots struggled a little bit um, to start with, but put together plenty of phases of action. Xander Ferguson uh, troops off. Uh, but anyway, in uh, 29 degrees of heat, 86% humidity, Bradbury happy, but probably nothing like as happy as the coaching team. The score in Singapore, Scotland 34, Italy 13. Congratulations on the result tonight. Uh, took you a little bit of time to get into the game, but the set piece looked, uh, looked decent. Yeah, it was OK uh, for the first time out. Uh, we saw, said all week that so it started from set piece and we wanted to play with a, a pace and a tempo that uh, the opposition would find difficult and I think we've done that to begin with. Uh, we maybe fell off a little bit midway through the first half but it certainly uh, paid dividends at the, at the end of the game. And the fitness levels are good, obviously tough conditions. You, you head to Australia next week but you must be happy with the momentum. Yeah, it's a good build-up for us. Uh, tough conditions but I think the boys handled it well. Uh, we always knew it was going to be tough like this, but uh, it, it puts, puts us in good stead for next weekend. And on a personal note, two tries. You'll have a lot of front rows around the world smiling tonight. Yeah, it's, pro it's pretty much doubled my, my record so far, so a pleasing night for myself. Congratulations.